I'm just going back and double checking the output transformer. When I looked at this before, I wanted to make sure that the output transformer with the uh, particular loudspeaker, the voice coil impedance, what's reflected back here on the primary will be a good match for the Type 59 tube. And at a quick glance, I think we have a problem. You can see our turns ratio is uh, just under 62 to 1. And just doing the math in my head, it looks like we're well north of where we should be to match the uh, 59 tube uh, load resistance. Let's look at the uh, manual for uh, a Type 59 tube, see what that number should be. And then we'll look and see if there's anything we can do to this transformer to get a better match. And if not, we'll replace it with a universal output transformer. So let's do the math real quick. You guys saw on the meter itself that I built. The turns ratio came back to 61.89 and the calculated impedance was uh, 3831 to 1. So let's just round up. We'll do 62 turns. And again, all we're doing is squaring that number or multiplying it by itself. And you can see it gives us the 3844. Now again, what I want to do is take that number and multiply it by the voice coil DC resistance. And that was measured at uh, 2.8 ohms. And then we're going to put a factor in there, a constant of 1.25, to estimate what the impedance itself would be. And you can see that gives us a reflected impedance uh, between 13,000 and 14,000 ohms. So again, if you look at the tube manual itself, you'll see that the tube is most happy with 6,000 ohms of load resistance reflected back on the primary side. So if we take the 13,454, divide that by 6,000, you'll see we're over 200% off. So 200% high, that's not a good match for the 59 tube, which is going to lead to distortion. Let's do the calculations and see what the output transformer turns ratio needs to be to be a better match here for the particular loudspeaker. So again, we already said that the loudspeaker itself measured 2.8 ohms times the 1.25 to estimate the impedance of uh, 3.5 ohms. So we'll just take note of that number. We know the tube itself wants to see 6,000 ohms load resistance. I can divide that by the uh, 3.5 and you can see that gives me an impedance ratio of 1714. I can take the square root of that number and calculate the uh, turns ratio. So roughly 41 to 42. So you can see if I take the 41.4 times the 41.4, you can see it comes back out to 1714 ohms. Again, if we multiply that by our 3.5, you can see we're right at our 6,000 ohms that the um, output tube would like to see. Let's think about this for a minute. I'm not sure if the uh, output transformer, there's enough girth to allow me to do so, but I should be able to uh, take the output transformer and increase the number of windings, which are, it appears the secondaries on the output side, and increase the uh, secondary windings and get the ratio correct. So we know we're sitting at about uh, 62. And we need to be around uh, 41, we said. So I just need to increase the secondary windings by 1.5. So for example, if I had 25 windings, and I'm not sure exactly what's there, 
we'll just assume 25 windings on the secondary. That 25 needs to be 37 or 38 windings. So let's see if we can take this transformer apart and count the number of secondary windings and see if there's anything we can do to uh, modify it just by making those adjustments to the uh, secondary side. It appears we can remove the uh, laminations. You can see where they're cramped down here on the uh, sides and this uh, bottom piece appears to be separate so uh, let me see if I can pry it out or pull it out. Okay, that's uh, one section down. Okay, there it is. And uh, just that one shim and that one side here. Well, and another one. Made it extremely tight. We already have some exposed windings right here on the uh, secondary where the uh, mice have chewed. So we'll just start cutting this back at this point. This tape over the uh, windings here was pretty much given up anyway. So I think this will be easy to count. Let me uh, put it under some better light just for a moment. And I want to take note of the winding direction just to make sure I get it back correct. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Okay, that may be a little better there, but you can see the uh, winding direction for this connection point. The wire goes back this way. So for this one, you can see it, uh, it's underneath this cardboard. It may be multiple layers here for the secondary winding. Just can't tell at this point. So I think there's about 22 turns on here, if I counted correctly. We'll go back and uh, just double check that. You can see the piece of tape used as a uh, strain relief. That's uh, pretty clever. All right, let me unwind this thing and just uh, count them as I go. And 22 and a half to this point. You can see we've got at least a double layer. So we're at 22 and a half to this point. So we're somewhere around 46 turns. So I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough space here to uh, go back in and uh, rewind this transformer or not. I may give it a shot and uh, decrease the uh, wire gauge here just a bit. You can see I got the bobbin in my hand and got everything tied off. Got my winding direction here correct, or what I believe is correct. And I'm going to go back with a 26 AWG. Looks like what was there was a 24. Again, I'll give this a try. If not, uh, Successful, of course, we'll place a universal output transformer in here. I'm going to take some uh, acid-free, all-purpose uh, glue stick here and apply it on the uh, bobbin or former to help um, kind of tack this wire down as I go. And I'll come back and uh, provide an update. Somewhere around 70 windings, I believe, should get our turns ratio where it needs to be. I'll wind to that point and then we'll check everything on the meter and uh, just unwind or add more if needed. You 
you can see I've been applying some of the uh, all-purpose glue stick as I've been wrapping each turn and I'm about uh, 35 turns now so it appears that the uh, 26AWG wire is the uh, best suit here to be able to uh, get my 70 windings on the coil so we're down at the bottom and then I'll just rewind back to the top and uh, cut some extra length and then check our turns ratio see if we can get somewhere close to 41 to 42 turns ratio you can see I'm just placing a little alcohol on my finger and uh, going back over the uh, glue to help um, get that down in between the uh, all right, I'll bring you guys back when I get uh, back up to the top here and get the additional uh, 35 windings in place. And then we'll check on the meter and see where we're at. Again, you can see the transformer here is starting to uh, take shape with the uh, first layer there of around 35 turns, if I counted correct, probably off a few. And I've got a piece of double-sided tape here I'm going to cut and uh, place it on here just to help hold the uh, second windings as uh, I cross through this uh, same area here. Okay guys you can see I've got the uh, transformer now hooked up to my meter and uh, we're reading exactly perfect really where I wanted to be between 41 and 42 turns ratio and you can see the impedance ratio now and I added about uh, see three or four turns here so I was probably off on my count just a bit but um, everything hooked up it looks good now I've got to pull this back out and uh, wrap the transformer so come back and provide an update on that and we'll give it one final test and of course I've got to get the uh, solder locations to here back in place and I think we'll be good to go. I'm going to wrap the transformer windings here with some gaffer tape and uh, you can see I've got a mark here 20 millimeters wide Now I'll just pull off enough here to do a couple wraps and hopefully not exceed the uh, girth. If so, we'll remove it. And I'll pull this nice and snug here. Alright, I think that will serve its purpose. Let me just make sure it still fits in the uh, E here. And it does with a little clearance there.